Hello guys and welcome to a new war game video today by me Vulcan and Val. Hello. Today we have the second game of a best of three between A and Z and CCD. This is once again the second round of the uppers bracket of the Reddit tournament and in the previous game we did see A and Z actually take down CCD in game one and it'll be interesting to see what exactly happens in game two so what are your thoughts to begin with Val? Um, this game I think will be extremely interesting and the reason is is because Patton is playing a Soviet airborne deck Wow, which is pretty pretty out there I'm expecting something very interesting uh, in this game but generally a very very fun map I think it's very wide open and lots of there's lots of scope for some very interesting strategies to go on yeah, so in this one we're going to see 38th parallel. It's a very large map, so there will be a lot to uh, watch out for. And uh, we're going to be able to see quite distinctly where uh, people will be pushing because of the amount of bridges on the map. But generally it's quite hard to keep an eye on all of the map at once, but we'll try our best. Uh, now on the uh, blue side we do have uh, ANZ with uh, Cheer Up, Nandim and I and Faust. And over on the red side... Uh, in this game, we do have CCD with Fadeway, Pattern, and Random. So, yeah, you said that Pattern has an airborne deck. What other decks are we looking at? So, we have Fadeaway with the uh, Sovco deck, which I believe is last game. And um, we have Random with the Soviet deck, which again, I believe is the same as last game. So, let's go over onto the blue side. We have um, Faust with a Sovco deck, which hasn't changed throughout the entire tournament and will probably stay the same until time immemorial. Uh, we have Nandem and I and Cherub who are both using Soviet decks. Okay, so pretty standard once again other than that airborne deck and it's going to be interesting to see how Patton is going to use that and how also ANZ will respond to uh, any large amount of helicopters that Patton might use, which is generally going to be the case if he's bringing an airborne deck. Uh, a lot of his infantry is going to be in helicopter transports, and he's also going to have access to a lot of uh, helicopters in general by default. Um, we also can't forget that he's also going to have access to a lot of aircraft, and we did see actually Patton use uh, almost too many aircraft in the last game, I think, but. Uh, yeah, we'll see how he moderates it in this one. Uh, did manage to get caught out in the later stages of the last game by the Tunguskas because they weren't using Seed. And um, we'll see if they make up for that. But some interesting units coming out of random at the bottom side. We are going to see a T-72BU start from him. What other units are we looking at? Well, we have the T-72K1, so they obviously watch the... Uh... Cylinder Boxster versus ANZ match we casted a while ago because Faust made great use of those uh, T-72K1 commands in Bravo and Delta, um, which I, I think is a, a really a really nice little strategy there. One thing I've noticed is if we go over to the blue side, Nandem and I has five Osa AKs. Wow. He's obviously expecting something here, um, <laughs> and he's got more of those uh, ZPTU-4s as well. So maybe maybe Patton Patton tip them off or uh maybe they're just being careful, I don't know, but that's a lot of AA from the start. Although it does show a bit of a weakness with Red Four in general, or more more accurately with the Soviet decks, is that they have terrible fast AA against helicopters. Like these OSA AKs are you know, because mo most most of these players don't like taking the Strela 10M in their deck, because they'd rather have other things in their place. So these o OSA AKs are pretty much the only Kind of fast mo motorized A that they they generally have in these decks, these these kind of pro players, um, and they're not very good against helicopters. So this this may be this may not work out too well for the blue team. Yeah, but they are pretty cheap. I think that's probably the reason that Nandi and I has quite a few of them. Um, but alongside the ZPTUs, if the helicopters get into range of those, they're not going to have a very good time anyway. Uh, not that that's quite likely to happen because the ZPTU actually has terrible range and uh, will be outranged by even the rocket pods of a helicopter. But um, I think he has a reasonable, uh, reasonable amount of infantry. Uh, we got a few BTR-90s there, probably some Spetsnaz Gru. Uh, we got some Spetsnaz maybe VDV in there as well. And um, I think 
generally it's quite hard to go for a concentrated push on this map because it's so large and if it gets taken out you leave yourself open on so many flanks so what we'll probably see is is both teams really sort of spread out and try to sort of cover as many bridges as possible in order to see where they want to push later in the game as opposed to making a push at the start of the game now that might be different in Patton's case because he's got a lot of helicopters and therefore his uh, reactions can be a lot quicker to what the enemy are doing and he is going to start with an MI-28 by the looks of things which does have a lot of A to GM so can take care of a lot of tanks and that is going to be supported by a KA-52 uh, exceptional recon so that's definitely going to have targets if those two helicopters stick together. Yeah, definitely. So we see Patton bring out a MiG-25 PD at the start just to kind of get an eye for the field, see if the enemy's brought any planes in or helicopters. I mean, it's always it's always a good uh, a good anti-plane plane with the uh, Chirp bringing his own MiG-25 PD in as well. Yeah, it does have the exceptional air detection, which allows it to see enemy aircraft. And it looks like uh, Patton's MiG-25 is going to get the jump onto Cheerup, so likely to see that shot down yet yeah, cheer ups is going to go down to patterns and patterns gets away unscathed going to go back and reload uh, we do see uh, pattern getting these mia mtvs over that bridge as quickly as possible and into juliet in order to secure that uh, probably going to see i think gorna strauki in the mia mtvs there uh i think so so the uh the k52 already firing on those uh there's poor OSA AKs because it looks like the radar hasn't been turned off from the start. Uh, a PD coming in again. I believe this is a second PD actually, but it. I know. I actually think that that's the first because it didn't take any damage, did it? But um, that just goes to show the the veterancy bonus of that airborne deck is coming into full force there. Yeah, the MiG-25 um, uh, MLD did go down from the blue side, and we also saw. Uh, the MI-8 MTV doing a lot of damage to these OSA AKs and the entire convoy really because the OSA AKs can only fire uh, while stationary, they don't have a stabilizer and Nandem and I got completely caught out by those helicopters and um, failed to stop the OSAs in time in order to fire back at the helicopters and that has just destroyed Nandem and I's forces completely. That T-80UM is going to be incredibly vulnerable as well if these OSA AKs get taken out. What a beautiful play by Patton here and you know I'm sure people would <laughs> accuse us of being quite cheesy but at the end of the day you know what works works and this has just been an exceptional job to uh the take to the Juliet sector. Well, uh, honestly, I think like more of the uh, responsibility comes down to Nandem and I then really just not stopping those Osas in time. As soon as he saw a helicopter, those should have been stopped because they would have been in range, to, especially in rocket pod range, to shoot back at those uh, MI8 MTVs. Yeah, definitely. I think well executed by, by Patton, but at the end of the day, every single strategy you know, that works very well. You generally have to rely on your opponent not playing it as well as you do. And uh, in this case, yeah, he didn't stop it. So let's take a look down in the box side because there's a lot of action going down there. MiG-27 just gets taken down. Um, and Faust actually has a CV in here before the red team, which is interesting. Yeah, ANZ does currently have the plus one lead. That MiG-27 actually did take out, I think, a T-72BU just in front of that smoke. And it looks like what... Uh, uh, Fadeway tried to do there or Random tried to do was smoke behind the tank so that he could reverse into it but he didn't manage to micro that in time. Um, it looks like Fadeway's T90S has got the jump onto the T72BU so currently winning that exchange although Cheerup's MiG-27 is going to turn that around and might be able to take out the OSA AKM as well but nope and uh, MiG-27 is going to get out of there fine because the OSA AKM uh, ran out of missiles and the Tor also missed its missiles as well. Uh, we did see a BRDM actually penetrate through the middle of the map towards India uh, a couple minutes ago and uh, that got taken out by an MI-24D by Fadeway so it's good reaction there. Uh, Patton's MiG-21 BIS coming in, that's a really nice plane to see. Has those rocket pods which can really pin down infantry squads and destroy them very quickly. But in the bottom side, it looks like Faust's uh, units here are slowly being picked off by uh, the slow push coming out of Fadeway and Random. 
Yeah, it looks like this uh, this double push from the two players looks like it's going to do some some good work down here. Um, but at the same time, Faust has still done a, a decent job of actually getting into the sector because they're still they're, they're losing points despite holding the enemy sector because of just how devastating that heli heli attack in the start was by Patton. Yeah. So, it, well, to be fair, it didn't actually do too much on the map because Faust managed to get into Bravo, and uh, Patton managed to get into Juliet, and that kind of cancelled out one another. But what I like to see is is these sort of probing units from the blue side. You've got a BRD. I'm just sitting in India at the moment. Uh, I'm pretty sure like Patton knows where it is, but just you know, getting it onto the other side of the river is really nice. And also, there was an Mi-24D in Gulf. And if that had flown over the CV there, that would have stopped reinforcements for a very long time, including the air corridor. So that would have been pretty massive. It would have been indeed. It looks like Patton has spent quite a bit of money on planes here. I mean, he is running the airborne back, so you'd expect him to. But that's four planes he's got up in the sky at the moment. So it's, it's no surprise that he doesn't actually have that much material on the ground in Juliet. Yeah, these uh, Gornostrelkis, though, definitely good, like, area of, like, denial kind of units with those HGMs. They can pick off APCs very easily. Uh, they do have 26 AP power as well. So if heavy tanks get into the range of uh, 1,575 meters, then, you know, they can also do a lot of damage to tanks as well. And um, I believe they used to have a longer range, but that was nerfed because they were so strong. And now we see Nandam and I using these ZPTUs to engage the uh, BDV, and he is going to split those so that they don't share morale damage from being attacked. But um, that MIA MTV coming up now, and that should be able to deal with those APCs very easily. Yeah, those rocket pods against those uh, very, very sparsely armored trucks are just excellent, excellent damage dealers. And. Um... I'm still wait, waiting a bit for Pan to consolidate his hold on Juliet, though. There's still no CV there, which is interesting. Yeah, we do see, though, uh, on the map in general, the disparity of units. You can see, like, there's just so many more red units than blue units at the moment, in general, because Nandem and I lost a lot of forces for nothing at the start, and that has affected him throughout this game, and will continue to do so. Uh, while Pan still has all of his forces from the start of the game, like all those Gornostrelki are like original units. And Faust is uh, replacing a lot of the units down the south, on the south side here. Um, Fadeway and uh, Random though, definitely taking the fight to Faust and uh, killing off a lot of his units. They did. They uh, managed to take down a BU with a unit of Spetsnaz Gru earlier that was in the, the Forest of Bravo that Faust controlled. These Spetsnaz coming in though, very, very uh, effective against infantry, but we see Random doing the old smoke smoke super heavy tank trick again, which is something I really, really like, where he puts smoke down behind his tank and then reverses it into the smoke so enemy uh, ATGM planes can't kill it, which is really, really beautiful to see. Yeah, we can see the MiG-27. It was coming in off map, but you can see as it lost targeting, it decided to fly in the other direction. And Faust probably microing that away as well, so it doesn't get caught out by the three OSA AKMs that are actually sitting behind the BU at the moment. Basically what's happening is uh, the BU is bait for these MiG-27s, and if they can start to shoot those down, it's definitely going to help out. So the MiG-27 targeted in again, Faust realizing, but still moving into range of one of the OSA AKMs and taking a hit. So that's going to uh, cause the MiG-27 to be evac'd, and the T-72BU is going to be safe for another couple minutes. Well, this is this is one of the things that, you know, this is like a, a random kind of signature move almost, because he's doing this back in ALB. Uh, him and Hunter, I believe, were the, the two who really... You know, they were basically the gods of ALB back in the day, and he just has such good micro skill, but he's, he's kept over to Red Dragon. The plays like this, with this, this incredible, you know, managing the sight vision with smoke is just something that he's learned to do, and something he does very, very well. Yeah, B5 coming in from Fadeway did take out the contesting CV in Delta, and the MiG-23 MLD there finishing off a helicopter, the MIA MTV, that was also uh, nearby the Spetsnaz Gru. So it looks like what we're going to see now is uh, Random really try to take back Bravo, because ANZ actually uh, ahead by plus one 
in conquest points again because Patton has still not captured Juliet, although the UAZ is coming up in India in order to do so. Yeah, we'll have to see because if the blue, if a uh, random, should I say, and Fadeaway can retake Bravo, this will be a massive point lead when uh, Patton gets his CV into Juliet. Yeah, I think Faust is actually having a really hard time here. Uh, pushing out of his position in Bravo. Um, obviously with, with two players pushing against him it's always going to be hard but as soon as he moves up into the, the compound there with those Spetsnaz and they show themselves they're just going to take so much uh, damage from the fire support in like an arc around that town at the moment and he, he only really has like one uh, bridge to reinforce from. Some of his vehicles will be amphibious but in general like the only safe haven after that bridge is the forest so it's very predictable where the majority of Faust's uh, units are and if like a b5 came in right now and bombed that tree line that would be devastating for Faust. It would be absolutely devastating and we, we can just see just how painful the loss of that BU earlier is because he just doesn't have anything apart from those gone Astrelki that can really match up to that BU you know there's not really much that can scratch it. Yeah, Random's units though are being taken out pretty easily at the moment by the Gorn Astralki and the BTR 90s. They are being resupplied by the Urals there until those Urals ran out of uh, munitions or supplies. So he's got a pretty strong hold there, but all it is going to take is this B5 coming in from Fadeway and that is definitely going to be taking out a couple of infantry squads. Those Gorn Astralki are surely not going to last very long. And also the Spetsnaz crew are going to go down too. Oh, it's just it's just disaster for Faust there. It was it was a disaster waiting to happen. And that is exactly what just happened. It really was. I mean, this is a plus three point lead. And that's with Faust still having that CV in the sector. And um, I, I think if, if Fadeaway and Random push together, I think they can take this forest. Yeah, that's pretty undefended now. Patton's trying to use a MiG-27 in the top side to take care of these probing BTR-90s, but the BTR-90 is taking cover in the tree line there. A couple of Spetsnaz grew, though, approaching Juliet. Uh, Going to make it definitely hard uh, for Patton to secure that, although the Spetsnaz grew quite away from the UAZ, so that's going to be safe for now. MiG-25 PDs did take out the MiG-27, so that's a nice little kill there, but back down to the bottom side, and we can see that Cheer Up is helping Faust push into Bravo. We do see the Burrachino uh, aiming, and uh, I'm pretty sure that's going to try and hit the compound where the Gorn Strelke, Morskaya, and VDV are. Yeah, I think that's really where you need to put it now because there's a big threat of those infantry just walking into the tree line at the moment, which would be absolutely devastating. But we see a, a K-52 coming in. There's actually pretty much, yeah, there's just some one Igla squad, or two Igla squads if you count the one on the other side of the river and Charlie as well, uh, that can really provide any anti-air for, uh, for this blue team. Uh, yeah, the Buratino firing again, but oh, it's just crazy. The MiG-27 once again being baited by this smoke. Um, that T-72BU is just baiting all of the aircraft. MiG-25 PD was brought in to cover the MiG-27 against the enemy AS ASM planes or um, air superiority uh, planes, sorry. But um, the OSA AKs actually fired a volley all at once and shot down the MiG-25 PD as well. So pretty crazy stuff. And uh, that's leaving Faust again more, even more vulnerable now. He doesn't have the, the air support that he really needs. He's just lost hundreds of points uh, just there. And now the T-72BU going to be able to advance and provide fire support uh, to any infantry pushing across the open here against uh, like onto the VDV. It is, but remember what you said earlier about the bridge. That BU is very, very, very at risk here until he can get into the forest. But luckily for them, it looks like there's no uh, anti-tank planes coming in quite yet. Well, that B5, though, there goes the rest of the infantry presence in that forest, other than the Spetsnaz crew. Uh, it, again, without the heavy AA there, like, no form of book or, or like, OSA AKs for Faust. It's just 
basically making it really hard for him to continue to defend that with the B5s still available to the red side. Yeah, just really excellent work by uh, by Random and Fadeaway here in Bravo because it looks like they're going to retake the sector and cheer up BU and Fast T72K1 or even both of them can't really can't really save the sector unfortunately. Yeah, nice strike coming out of the Buratino and Faust though. Stunning the push for now, but definitely not going to prevent that from going all the way through. And as you can see, we do have a plus three lead now for the red side uh, after Patton has secured Juliet and they are now contesting Bravo. Uh, once the T72K1 gets forced out of Bravo, that's going to be a plus five lead for the red side. And now their early game moves really coming to fruition. Uh, it's definitely helped them to get into the position they need to win this game. Definitely so. I, I think this is the red red team's game to lose here. You know, Pan just did an excellent job, just really, really destroying a lot of non demonized units and, and making him almost a non threat in the top side because he's not even really advanced towards Julia apart from a few probing attacks with these Spetsnaz crew. Um, and in the meantime, because Faust unfortunately um, it couldn't secure secure Bravo, which I mean he's not really expected to. Uh, there's just not really much he can do. Yeah, the T72BU is going to go down on the bridge at Bravo, and the, another MiG-27 does take out the command tank. The, the Tunguskaram finally there to shoot down both MiG-27s, but with both those tanks gone though, Bravo is completely under control and the red side are at that plus five lead. Let's see if that SU-24 can get shot down. No, it cannot. And now the B-5 coming in. That's gonna land its bomb directly on top of the Tunguska. Let's see if the Tunguska can get the revenge kill though. Yes, it can, before it goes down heroically, <laughs> trying to save the T-72s. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it really. Uh, there's not much of a chance Faust is going to be pushing into Bravo, especially with that choke on the bridge there. Uh, he's going to have to rely on the amphibious units, the BTRDs, uh, but as soon as there's some fire support in that forest, uh, he can't really expect uh, to make much ground there. And same goes for the top side. Those corner Strelke from Patton, uh, they, they haven't actually been like directly engaged. Uh, they've just been using those HGMs uh, to really hold off any push or basically put off uh, Nandim and I from even pushing in the first place because those HGMs are so powerful. Definitely so. It's one of those sort of, not, not so much mind games, but just when you see an HGM fire at you, it doesn't matter what the damage is, you still you know stop and think, you know, I've got to move my tanks out of this or move my transports. So just their presence there is already kind of forcing, forcing Nandim and I just to, to not really advance. Yeah, so it looks like ANZ fighting hard till the end. They were bringing a command up to Echo to try and stem some of that, that conquest lead. But after 17 minutes and 43 seconds, CCD are going to take the second game against ANZ in this best of three. So that brings it back to 1-1 and it's going to be all to play for in the final game. Just check out that KD. What did you think of that? I think I think this was it was a game that was secured on the backs of random and fadeaway, but I think Patton won them that game. And you know, obviously Nandem and I not quite handling that heli push, you know, as he probably should have done because that was just so successful. I was honestly surprised to see it be that successful. I thought with all those OSA AKs that, you know, he'd lose at least a few of his very high point helicopters, but got absolutely rolled over really. And um, you know, despite the best efforts of, of ANZ, Random and Fadeaway just steamrolled through uh, in Bravo. Took a bit of time, but they they were relentless in their assault. And Random showing us why he's one of the best micro players in the game with that incredible, you know, smoke tank cover really that he was using, which is just a real pleasure to watch. I think. Yeah, I think um, what Random and I got caught out by the fact that it was an airborne deck anyway. I think. Um, yeah, yeah, he had a lot of those OSA AKs, but the, the point you made at the start of the game, which was really good, was that uh, the infrared or 
close range or helicopter sort of AA for the Soviet decks is really kind of bad. Um, those Acer AKs, for example, don't have a stabilizer, and that is probably the primary reason that Nandim and I lost his entire convoy to Patton's helicopters. And you can just see how much of an effect that had on the game because of Patton's KD. He's 2,060 kills to 1,150 losses. And we also saw Patton's infantry survive for like the whole game. Yeah, just an, an excellent job, really. And his air cover was on point as well. Just Patton playing really well this game. Um, I still got to hand it to Fausto in the bottom side. He played extremely well against that really overwhelming push. But in the end, just got taken over, and you know, d despite despite losing this game, I still think ANZ you know put up a good show. Just Nam and Dem and I really, you know, dropped the ball a bit at the start, and then it just sort of had a knock-on effect to the point where ANZ just couldn't really have any chance of coming back. Really, I think. Yeah, they lost too many units at the start, and it really sort of snowballed into a victory because CCD definitely know how to take advantage of that. And I think they made a great choice with the two players in the bot side facing Faust and Cheer Up to try and like suppress that push into that bottom side and uh, then just let Pat Patton do what he wanted in the top side against Nandem. I mean, I, especially after that uh, helicopter push was like so successful. So anyway, uh, do you have any last uh, thoughts? Well, it's the same as the same as last game, really. I'm really looking forward to game three. It's all to play for now. Um, and we've seen that CCD, they can beat ANZ. You know, this is... ANZ is a team that I think most people would put as their favourites for this tournament, but this game was really well played by CCD. And, you know, we could see ANZ going to lose the loser's bracket, so if CCD pulls something like this out again. Yeah, I think the pressure's definitely on... Uh, to ANZ now to win the third game because coming off a loss it's going to be very hard for them to come back in a best of three in the third game and get their mindset right in order to uh, bring that back and go 2-1 against CCD but the reverse can happen and we could see either team really uh, drop down into the lower bracket but yeah really old to play for and the winner will be moving on to what would be the semi-final I assume yeah so yeah uh, we're going to have to wait for that one, guys. Uh, but in the meantime, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Goodbye.